opening the conversation to for real estate agents to invest yeah, yeah. because so many real estate agents don't yeah. invest like 99.9 right? percent so right and so yeah. that, that's a that's a niche that yeah. i'm going after big time yeah because it does two things for me i you know i'm teaching real estate agents something they need to know yeah pushing them into something they need to do because honestly it's the end game yeah for agents Ricky Carruth. How are you doing, brother? What up, my guy? Yeah, super excited to have you here. We're at the Wealthy Investor event, and Ricky is about to go out tomorrow and speak in front of a thousand wealthy investors. One thousand. Are you nervous? No. No? No, oh, okay. I spoke too. This will be the biggest crowd, but I, I did a 800 win. Yeah. It was my event in, in Miami uh -huh. uh, a couple years ago, and then I did 800 in Brazil. Oh, really? I was the keynote speaker at the uh, R4 for Remax in Brazil. Oh, okay. The National That's crazy. Remax Conference. And it was yeah. 800 B Brazilian Remax agents. Oh, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> so, like, they, had, they had boxes. They have soundproof boxes. Have you been to like international? No. Like, so, so they have soundproof boxes with translators. Oh. And so these translators are in the box, you know, yeah. the soundproof box, and they're listening in their ear to the speech. Yeah. And they're translating it in real time. Yeah. And everyone's wearing headphones in the oh. audience. Oh, what the hell? It's nuts. And so yeah. when I went to listen to uh, to the Portuguese speakers, I had the headphones on listening. Yeah. They were they were translating it into English. That's crazy. Right? And I was listening to it in real time. It was yeah. nuts. That's crazy. So. All right, Ricky. Well, we don't have a long time, so I want to confront you. So, <laughs> so I do have a real estate license, and, but I've noticed that the realtor culture doesn't jive with real estate investing. Anytime I talk to my old realtor buddies, they're like, man, I don't get it. Is it illegal? I don't know if it's ethical to buy yeah, houses yeah. and rentals. Are you teaching your community about real estate investing? A hundred percent. Yeah. Right. So this really, uh, this year, we just yeah. started the year, but yeah. um, like maybe for like the last three to six months, yeah, I've been creating more content around investing yeah but what i've been doing is is you know when i do a live or i do a training session it's all real estate agents yeah so my following is real estate agents so I'm yeah in a coaching session yeah i mean i just did the my 2023 kickoff session i did uh all uh -huh. kinds of different sessions right and uh -huh. like within those sessions i'm saying listen i'm trying to open up the conversation uh -huh. in the real estate agent community yep about investing so like yeah. that, that's my big push yeah. this year is opening the conversation to for real estate agents to invest yeah, yeah. because so many real estate agents don't yeah. invest like 99.9 right? percent so right and so yeah. that, that's a that's a niche that yeah. i'm going after big time yeah because it does two things for me i you know i'm teaching real estate agents something they need to know yeah pushing them into something they need to do because honestly it's the end game yeah for agents unless yeah. they want to sell forever and i, I literally watched several agents die yeah. making calls, like yeah. selling till three days before they died. Yeah, um, that sucks. Yeah. yeah, and they were legends and stuff. Yeah, but like I watched that happen. Yeah. And so I sit back and I think, man, dude, like, because some people are like, oh, I'll just go be a coach like you and stuff. I'm like, dude, I lost 100,000 for two years and sacrificed everything to be where I'm at. Yeah. Like as far on that side of it. Yeah. Like, like one out of a thousand people can go become an influencer or build a big social, yeah. build a business around yeah. on the back end of a brand. Yeah. But everybody can go out and invest in real estate and yep. have that long term vision for, yep. you know, where they could end up. 100%. So like it, it, it helps me educate my, my agents yeah. more, but also opens me up to a new audience, yeah. you know, of real estate investors 100%. who aren't real estate agents. So. That's kind of my thing on social media this this year to pivot into. Yeah. You know. But yeah, dude, I'm putting you're paying down the debt on top of it. Yeah. You're getting depreciation, you're writing yeah. off, and it's gonna appreciate. appreciate. Yep. It's a lot more than two hundred dollars, my guy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like they don't understand. It's not no. sexy. It's like two hundred dollars now. No. But they're not looking at what it could be long term. Yep. So hundred percent. Taking responsibility. You should take exactly responsibility. I'm putting about. it on you. So I remember when I worked at my uh, brokerage, uh, not my personal brokerage, I worked at a brokerage in California and I told my broker manager, manager of the office, I was like, Hey, uh, I think I want to start like flipping houses. He was like, Brian, you don't want to start flipping houses. You should just keep cold calling expireds 
keep getting listings, you know, keep doing that. And then eventually, you know, you'll get a buyer's agent. And then you do expired, you have a buyer's agent, and then you get a TC and assistant, and then you know, you'll you'll make a great living, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year just doing that. And I was like, Yeah, but I feel like there's more that I could do. He was like, Brian, these investors, they have like these like intricate when a deal comes on the MLS that's a flip and it, and they're so fast that you're not gonna like it's it's gonna be hard for you to compete. Yeah, and I'm like, dude, that doesn't make sense. That's like saying that you there there's really good agents out there and you can't compete. And yeah, you say, well, how can I compete on expires when there's all these agents, seven hundred agents calling them, and the same yeah. thing. So yeah, it's the same thing. It's like basically saying you can't make it on social media. You can, they, he basically told you you can't succeed at nothing. No, because there's too much competition. Yeah, right. Yep. So that's what he was telling. Yeah, you, but. No, nah, l- listen, the, the thing, I think the best advice is, is that, you know, everybody's different. Yeah. Right? So it's hard to like say, here's what you should do kind of thing. Cause yeah. everybody's different. But like the way that I did it and the way that I would, you know, I, I, it was a great path for me. Yeah. Was like, I focused on my real estate agent business. Yeah. Built that to a million a year. Yeah. Like, and just put everything I had into that. Yeah. Build that brand, make that million a year. Yeah. Get it up to that point. And I picked up a few properties like along the way. Yep. But I wasn't like all in investing. I wasn't yep. like searching for deals. I yeah. wasn't, you know, banging away, trying to find opportunities yep. and buy deals. I just, when I came across a deal, I would yeah. buy it. I didn't yeah. buy that many properties. I probably bought like one property a year yeah something like still that, better right? than nothing something really small yeah. like little houses little duplexes and fourplexes and stuff like that yeah condos and yeah commercial real small stuff yeah um i never tried to buy anything big i never tried to like over you know leverage i never tried anything crazy mm-hmm. um and like that worked out really well because it's like i picked up some properties focused 90% of my energy on let's make a million a year. Yeah. Right? And once I built that up to that point, it's pretty much on a very residual um, basis because once you build your business up to that point, you're living off your database. You're not like prospecting anymore yep. for new clients when you build mm-hmm. it up to a million a year. You're, mm-hmm. you're pretty set as long yeah. as you're marketing to your database properly, staying in touch and all that. So then I can, you can take that prospecting time you were prospecting mm-hmm right, still maintain the million a year over here, but then use that money and this extra time to then start trying to get more serious yeah. about investing. Yep, That's the way that I did it, you know. So <clears throat> I never made it to make a million dollars as a real estate agent. Um, I got up to like five, 500K. And, um, but I reached a point where I was like, dude, I don't wanna do this anymore. Like I remember it was New Year's and you know, the real estate community is very small, especially the the realtor community. And on Instagram, everyone's posting like, closed 50 deals, 14 million in transactions. Oh, this year I closed 220 deals and blah, 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 blah. You know, just everyone's posting their numbers, literally New Year's night, I remember it. I posted mine too. And then I was like, damn. So I did 50 deals. I did 50, 60 deals, something like that. And I was like, what's my goal next year? And I'm like, dude, I don't want to do a hundred deals. I just went through hell for like a whole year. I just worked every weekend. I just did 70 appraisals, 80 home inspections. I toured a hundred and some houses. Like, I don't want to do that. That sucked. So that's kind of like what sparked me into getting into real estate investing, but like, what would you say to just realtors specifically who are like, they don't like what they're doing. They do it for the money. They do it because they don't like their, they don't want a job. They like the freedom, but they actually don't like their current job or they're getting burnt out. I don't know, man, because I loved it. Yeah. Um, I didn't have that problem. But I'm sure you've heard it before. Well, and I got to that point, right? Yeah. So that's the thing. Like, you love it till you don't. Yeah. Like, um... You know, because I never built a real estate team. I was single agent. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm, I was fine with it. Yeah. Right? I enjoyed it. I yeah. enjoyed prospecting, showing property, listing appointments, yeah. negotiating, closing deals. Um, I loved the process. Yeah. So um, I remember Joshua Smith and, and I were talking and, um, you know, he was talking to me about teams and this and that. And I was like, I'm good. I, I like what I'm doing, you know, yeah. like in a million. He's like, you'll love it till you don't. And I was thinking, you're probably right. 
you know? Yeah. And then that was like, I don't know, four or five years before, like in March of last year, mm -hmm. I was done, bro. I'd been burnt out for like a year, like not loving it anymore, yeah. right? Um, but, you know, that was 2021, let's say, when mm -hmm. I started like not really feeling it. Um, but see, in 2017, that first year I made a mill, mm -hmm. I took my prospecting time and I went and built a brand, mm. right? So like I started, that's when I started coaching and, you know, um, speaking and writing and posting and creating content and all yeah. that stuff. So like, you know, what I'm telling people is take that prospecting time that you don't have to do anymore. Yeah. You built a business and go spend that focusing on trying to acquire properties yeah. and stuff. Um, I took it and went, I was like, let me go build it with this brand and see what I can really do in the business world, yeah. you know, outside of this. So like I was already to that point where like, this is like five years of, po of creating content, building yeah. like a massive brand. Yeah. And I was still showing properties. Yeah. Right. Like I showed properties five years mm -hmm. after I started making videos and posting and coaching and speaking and stuff. Dude, yeah. it's nuts. Still a single agent and everything. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of a different bird, but, but when it came that time where I was done, I was done. You that's know? how I was. And so like, that's the thing. A lot of agents see it. There's the, the flip side to what you're saying is I hear it a lot. One thing I hear a lot is that I love sales and see, they're going to love it till they don't. And the thing I is, was there before too. the thing is, is that, that if they start buying properties now, years before it gets to that point, yep. Right. Instead of waiting till you're at the point where you're 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 burnt out yep. to start buying properties. Yep. You know, that's the problem is because it takes a long time for these properties to really turn into, you know, that that end of the rainbow uh, situation. I mean, like you've got the cash flow, but, um, you know, a lot of time you have to have a lot of properties to make substantial cash flow enough to like for somebody to really retire. hundred percent. You know what I mean? And that takes time to build that portfolio. You can't yeah. just start and build that portfolio in a year. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, man, like agents that, that just think they love sales forever. Yeah. They're the ones that really need to be, because the people that really love it, they're hitting it hard. Yeah. And if you're hitting it hard, you're going to get burnt out. 100%. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. You can't be a warrior forever. No, no, no. But some people do. Like some people did. I've seen people do it. Some people like, do, but not like, first of all, I don't want to do it. Like I, you know, some, at some point. So let me, let me, let me go back a little bit. What I'm super grateful that I became a realtor. I am super grateful because before that I worked at Pizza Hut. I worked at Sonic. I worked at like stupid jobs. I was going to college for sociology. I wanted to help people that had like uh, had uh, personality disorders and stuff like that. I actually used to work and get paid by medic Medicaid, so Medicare, Medicaid, whatever it is. I used to work with children that had personality disorders. I would spend a couple hours with them, teach them like basic like listening skills, you know, how to create tasks, like just basic things to keep them functional in society. And I was making nothing, like nothing. Like maybe let's say you, I get to work with a kid for the state said it had to be two hours, max four hours at a time. So I go work with a kid. Maybe the parent had two hours. Okay. I made $20. Then I would have to go drive to another kid work there for two hours go drive to another kid oh guess what the kid is like hey uh i'm hungry my mom didn't feed me today because these are not like you know i'm i'm like in the hood helping these kids out mm -hmm. i'm like damn okay I'll, I'll take you to jack in the box all right that was 14 dollars right there that's i just work for free pretty much right that's what i was doing before i became in uh, a real estate agent so I, I, I met a buddy. He was like, yeah, you know, I make 60 K as a realtor. I was like, dude, I'll do that. Went to the class to become a realtor. I remember my teacher said, you can make a hundred thousand dollars as a realtor. I'm like, holy crap, a hundred thousand dollars being a realtor. And I only got to sell like 12 houses. That's one house a month. I'll freaking bust my ass and work to sell one house a month. So I am super grateful that I started it, but I yeah. think realtors like i said they get trapped in this little bubble it's created by the social media that they watch the mike fairies those type of people they they stay in the bubble because the broker tells them 
my one of my brokers told me, oh, you know, so I was like, why are people selling houses by owner? Why are they doing that? Oh, I don't know. You you need a house. Uh, you need a realtor to sell your house. So it's it's kind of illegal. I'm like, oh, these damn fizzbos are doing illegal crap. Like. The, the whole culture like breeds you to stay in the office, make your cold calls, yeah. do the open houses. So like it, it is a great way to start in real estate, but it's not like you should be a realtor for the rest of your life and yeah. never own real estate. I just don't right. agree with that mindset. Hey, it's Ricky. I hate to interrupt this podcast, but really quickly, I wanted to share with you a way that you can create content exactly like me. I'm posting so much content, so much quality content, and that content is helping me build multi-million dollar businesses. If you're having trouble creating content, coming up with the ideas, filming, editing, all that stuff, I want to help you with every bit of it. All you have to do is go to wealthycreator.io backslash Ricky. So again, that's wealthycreator.io backslash Ricky to set a call up with my team today so that you can get started creating content exactly like me and turning those views into real clients. Now back to the show. It's not an end game. Yeah, no, it's a start. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, and, that, and, that, and that's... I mean, I did it for 20 years straight. Yeah. Um, you know, that was my start. Yeah. Um, but the thing was, dude, is I grew up roofing houses and I wanted to make a million dollars and I saw the path yeah. with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, it depends on like, everybody's different, but like, I've, I could visualize, I could visualize that path. Yeah. Dude, like <laughs> when I, so like I got in in 2002, right? I made a mill before I'm 23. Yeah. I lose it all in the crash, flipping houses. Oh shit! Yeah, and there's a bunch of drawbacks to flipping houses. Right, go right. Ahead. Yeah. And like, and like, I and like, I'm not like houses. Yeah. Right. So I flip like a house a month right now, but I pay cash. Yeah. For houses, yeah. my backup plan is if a house doesn't doesn't sell, or if I don't want to sell it for a loss or something, I can rent that out and take equity out. Yeah. Right. That pays that debt. That the rent pays the debt and go use that money somewhere else. Yeah. Um, if I leverage and then I get in trouble, I could, you know, I'm bleeding. Yeah. Right. Never going to do that again, but yeah. I put debt on all my long-term stuff, but I, I lost that mill and yeah. everything. Yeah. Right. They took my house, my car, everything. Yeah. And I was sleeping in a car my friend gave me and I was, uh, uh, sleeping on people's couches, eating out of people's refrigerators and stuff like that. Yeah. And when I came back, um, it was 2008 when I got back in the real estate because I was roofing houses, working on an oil rig, got laid off from the oil rig yeah. in 2008 and went back into real estate, right? Yeah. Dude, I didn't even realize that the, real, that the stock market crashed in 2008. No? Mm-mm. Had no, no clue. Yeah. No clue. Yeah. Right? Because I was so focused on yeah. this right here. Yeah. Right? Making my calls, building my relationships, yep. closing my deals. Like properties were half price. Yeah. It was like blood in the streets, dude. It was easy. Yeah. It was so easy, man. It was like, who wants a property for half price? Yeah. Me. Yeah. Everybody wanted a property for half price, dude. It wasn't hard for me to go out like 2008. You know, I crushed it. I made twice as much as I made the year before on the oil rig. Then I made more money every year since, you know, yeah. every year since. Um, but like, I was so focused on like that. Yeah. And the, I could see, I could visualize the path from A to B and million yeah. dollars. Dude, I, I didn't even know what was going on like around me or anything. Yeah. I had no idea about stock market crash. I didn't even like, I got on, um, I got on, what was the one before Facebook? Uh, MySpace. MySpace, yeah. Right, I went on MySpace. I had a MySpace account like in 05 or something, right? Yeah. And it kind of went away. Yeah. You know what I mean? Pretty quick. And yeah. I was like, okay, you know, all these little social media things popping up are just like gonna be like here and gone kind of thing. Yeah. So after that first MySpace experience, like I just kind of disregarded social, social media. media. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like when I came back in, I was just focused on one thing. Yeah. Build this business to a million dollars. Yeah. And I didn't care or even know or even think about nothing else. Yeah. It's focused on one thing. I didn't think about social. I didn't think about stocks. I didn't, nothing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That was it. That's how focused you have to be. 100%. But like when somebody sees the path, yeah. get somewhere yeah you have to focus that hard 100 you know what i'm saying to get there 
Um, but I knew that once I got there, then I could parlay that into whatever. Yeah. That's what I did. The first year I made a million, I started, I was, I looked around and I was like, oh, social is a thing. Yeah. Okay. Let me go crush this then. Mm -hmm. It's such a thing. Yeah. And that kind of led, you know, one thing led to another, but yeah, yeah, dude, I didn't even know what was going on. I was like that too. When I was, when I was a realtor, I was so focused that I remember I would tell people at the office, I'm like, can you just turn the music off? <laughs> like the people playing music, I'm like, can we just turn it off? Can we just work? Like people are like, oh, like let's go to a restaurant. I'm like, bro, why? Why? Yeah. I'm I'm like so locked in. Like people are like, oh, the, the nights are playing. I'm like, who cares? Being real um, successful in real estate, super lonely. It is. Like it I, is. I worked at the office every day. Me too. COVID. Yeah. I was an office guy. Me too. I still and am. And I was in there by myself. Like I had my own little office and stuff. I'm in there by myself, bro. We had a 50 office, like a 50 room building. Yeah. You know, with different offices, 50 different offices. And yeah. There was like three or four that were actually being used yeah. by people. It's everywhere across the country. It looks like that. But like the, the, the agents that, you know, like most agents are just doing it kind of just, yeah, well, they're not really like, yeah. like treating it like a real like nine Business. to five. No. My second broker told me he was like, if you treat real estate like a job, it'll be the best paying job you ever had. 100%. And so like, I look at agents right now that are getting out of the business because a lot of them are getting out of the business right yeah. now. Yeah. And it's like, they're like, I'm gonna go get a job. I gotta go to a job. I gotta go yeah. bills and stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm like, you're gonna go work 40 hours a week somewhere? Yeah. They're like, yeah. I was like, okay, and how, like, are you making calls? Like, how, what have you been doing for the past two weeks to try to build your real estate business? You know, yeah. Oh, you know, this, that. Yeah. Come to find out they're spending like three or four hours or so on their business. I'm sure. Right? Yep. And so I'm like, so you're gonna go spend 40 hours busting your ass on somebody else's business? Yep. And you wouldn't even spend more than three hours a week on your own business? Yep. And so like, I'm trying to tell agents right now because so many agents got in during COVID yeah. and now they're leaving the business because they didn't sell anything or whatever, mm -hmm. but they haven't spent any time trying to build their business. Nope. And I'm like, work like it's somebody else's business. Yep. If you can get in the same mindset for your own business that you do, you know, a job that you're gonna go get, it'll be yeah. the best paying job you ever had. 100%. People don't treat real estate like it's a job. Nope. Right? Nope. And that that's one of the big problems. I grew up roofing houses, working from sun up to sundown, um, dude, I, I served tables, concierge, um, you know, landscape, framing, painting, cook pizzas, cook in a restaurant, seafood cook, all kinds of stuff, dude. I can't even tell you all the stuff I did. Yeah. But I was always, I've always been a worker. Yeah. If I lost a job or something, I was working the next day. Yeah. I got in a fist fight with my dad one time over a tape measure, I put it in the wrong bucket, and the next day he couldn't find it. I was like, well, it's right here. And we got in a fight like a fist fight. Yeah. And I was like, all right, dude, I'm walking home, walked home, called another roofer, hopped on a roof that day. Yeah. Roofing houses. Like I don't, there's no downtime. Yeah. Like I'm doing something. Yeah. You know what I mean? But most people aren't. No, they're not like that. Like that you nope. know what I'm saying? But I don't, I don't get that. See, that's the thing. I don't, I'm not. I don't, everyone can't be like that. I, obviously. But I don't, re but you're doing something. Yeah. Right. I don't, yeah. I don't relate. I don't, it, yeah. it's hard for me to relate. That's yeah. just me. I'm, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I, so, so I used to be like that. Like I said, I used to be extreme focused. Like I remember I would, it sounds stupid, but I would like, if let's just say I wanted to be out the office at eight and I open my door to get to my car at seven 30, I'm like literally running to my car. Like, and I caught myself doing that. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, why am I running to my car to get to the office at eight? There's nobody waiting for me. Uh -huh. I'm just going to be there by myself. Right. Or I remember like the Super Bowl of whatever year. I remember I was at the office cold calling and then I set an appointment with an expired listing because nobody was calling expired. So went on the listing appointment, got the listing, came back to the office. I got a new Zillow lead, took the, took the lead out, went out, showed houses, came back to the office, was writing offers during the Super Bowl. And I was like, damn, like, I guess the lump, the, the, the level of competition in realtors is so low mm -hmm. that it's hilarious to me. Yeah. I would be like, I'm in the office cold calling. I, I got mojo on, I got, I'm dialing. I'm, I'm like watching people. I see the guy show up at eight or nine, maybe 10, work on his little computer. He'll stand up, he'll go get some coffee. 
then he'll go chat with the other guy and then his best friend comes in they come in and then they're running comps and then they go to lunch for an hour and then they come back and then maybe they do something and i'm trying to hit 50 contacts by 12 p.m and i'm like bro this is like easy it's so easy but i know you can't like for me i i realized that like you can't be like super on all the time because you'll burn everything around you. Yeah. I learned that from Kobe Bryant. I, I never met him, but he had a video. He's like, there's a reason why God created the sun and the moon, because if the sun was up all the time, it would, it would kill all vegetation and there wouldn't right. be life on here. So I had to find a balance because I was so hard all the time that even in my personal life, my wife is like, oh, this happened with the Kardashians. I don't give a, you know, but I can't be like that. You can't be like that all the time. It, it, yeah. it, you'll push people away. So now I, I try to find a balance of like focus and a part of me that like, we'll go do stuff like very last story. I remember my, my friend, one of my good friends, he's my barber. His name's Charlie. He's like, dude, let's go watch fast and the furious. And I'm so hard at this moment. I'm like, dude, what? Like, what the hell am I going to go to the movie theater for? Like, what is there? It ain't nothing there for me. But I was like, yeah. I was like, let me just go. So I go. And then there was more people there that I wasn't aware were going to be there. And they're all like joking around. And then we watch the movie. We have a good time and we go out and I'm like, you know, work is good, but there is life that I don't want to miss working all the time. Right. right so right. that's, that's the part that I've always struggled with is like yeah. balancing but yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of times when I was in the middle of trying to build my business that didn't work out at all. Me too. Right. Just like so focused. And then when my business was doing good, you know, that kind of a little breathing room, I would get back in the gym. Yeah. You know, and I'm working out again. Um, so we go through phases 100%. I think, with this, you know, I know exactly what you're talking about and uh, it's a big, big problem. So like I worked 15 hours a day for 15 years. Yeah. Right. On real estate. Yeah. Right. Because we, we didn't have like Mojo and Red X and stuff. Yeah. I couldn't just push a button and find a thousand numbers. Yeah. I had to look them up individually. I'd be <laughs> pasting addresses and stuff. Right. Yeah. I yeah. Spend all night looking up a hundred and then all the whole day and the next day hand dialing them. Yeah. I used to right? hand dial. Yeah. So I do like nine to three. It took me to like hand dial a hundred numbers. Yeah. And then I would hand write. 20 letters every day and yeah. I would start looking up numbers and it would take me hours to yeah. look up all the numbers I wanted to call the next day. So yeah. I'd look up the numbers I'm going to call the next day. But like now, um, there's a lot of things. Number one, for me, like I'm to a place where I can knock off at five every day and on the weekends yeah. right, and chill, chill with the family and stuff. Um, but for like new agents and people that are still building and grinding and stuff. You've got the technology and everything. Yeah. Like it took me 15 hours to call a hundred numbers. I know. Okay. Yeah. Like you can literally do that with a click and then auto dial takes an hour minutes. and a half. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Hour and a half. So yeah. like you can do what Ricky yeah. did in a 15 hour day and an yeah. hour and a half. You could do it faster now. Be for done sure. <laughs> by 10 o'clock with yeah. a Ricky day Yeah. when he was building his business and still have your entire like half the morning and all day after lunch, yeah. you could literally build your business in a way if you took advantage of, you know, the technology and communication, you could literally, even as a new agent, be in a position where you don't really work after five unless you're showing property, mm -hmm. right? Unless you're going to a listing appointment showing property or something. Mm -hmm. um, I was always on call, um, you know, if somebody yeah. wanted to see a property or listing appointment or write an offer or something, I mean, I was there. I don't care if it was midnight, Me weekends too. or whatever, um, you know, and I love doing it, dude. Like writing an offer during the Super Bowl, I did that a couple of times. Yeah. And I'm thinking in the back of my head, dude, I mean, I grew up roofing houses for like $200 a week. You know, I'm like, I'm going to make 25 grand. Like I'm writing this offer. Like I'm counting the money. Yeah. I'm like this is 25 G's right here. Yeah. Dude. I'm just like, you know, yeah. Um, I don't know, dude, everybody's different, comes from different backgrounds. It's all yeah. about kind of what you want out of life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but like being a full-time flipper for me, it's risky if that's your yeah. like main source of income because 100%. you could lose money on a house. 100%. If you're, if you're taking money from other people, yep. you could lose their money. Yep. Um, 
you know, and you're paying a shit ton of taxes. A hundred percent. Right. I mean, all the taxes, you know, for me, <laughs> like the only reason I flip houses now is because I have two other partners that love doing it. Yeah. And I want to maintain those relationships. It's the only reason. Yep. Honestly, it's the, only, if, if it were me, I would buy the same houses we're buying and just keep them. Yep. Right. Um, because like, like we flipped like a hundred houses in the last, like whatever, four years, yeah. whatever. Um, if we would have kept 30 of those of the best ones, yeah. kept them and rented them out, we would be, our net worths would be so much more. Yeah, we would have so much cash flow yeah. coming in. Yep. But instead we flipped it for 20 grand a piece or yep. whatever we made and we paid taxes on it and that's yeah. that. You know, it's not the smartest business move no. in, in my opinion. No. Even if you're towards the end of your life because you can, you know, give that to your kids. I mean, it's, you know, one of the guys is kind of older, you know, and he just wants to flip in, get in, out, get in and out of stuff. And I'm like, well, the dude is worth like, you know, tens of millions. So yeah, probably just, he's just doing it for fun. He just likes it. Yeah. He's actually, he actually fixes the houses up too for us. Damn. You know, like so he just he, likes it then. He's a farmer. He's just like a retired farmer. He just wants something to do. Yeah. Has too much money. <laughs> yeah. So, so we teach people at Wealthy Investor to do all ways of investing so yeah. it's not just flipping flipping wholesaling yeah. airbnb and there's a reason why because you can't just flip every house you'll run yeah. out of capital you'll put yourself in too much debt you'll 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 hurt yourself if you only know how to do one aspect but last two topics i want to talk to you about number one um we'll talk about leadership so the mission of wealthy investor is to build leaders in rich communities that's what the wealthy investor is for. It's not get rich quick. It's not buy a Rolex and Lambo. It's build leaders in rich communities. How do you become a better leader? Mm. I don't think everybody's built to be a leader. I, I disagree. Really? <laughs> yeah. I think everyone could, could be a leader. Everyone is a leader. Uh huh. Let's say my wife. My wife doesn't work. Is she not a leader? Yeah. Um, that, I mean, good point when you think about it like that. Right? Exactly. I'm thinking about it. Okay. So you're thinking about it in terms of life in general. Exactly. You know, kids. Yep. Um, Church. You know, you're right. People that, you know, leading by example. Yep. More than being a leader of a large group of people and organizing and inspiring and all that yeah. stuff. So two yeah. different things. Yeah. So as far as being a leader of a large organization, inspiring, motivating, you yeah. know, organizing and stuff like that. Yeah. Not everybody. That is a very, that's a rare breed. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Um, leading by example through your life for people around you and your family and your kids and stuff like that. Absolutely. Even if you're, you know, <laughs> leading the wrong, down the wrong path, you're still leading in some form or, or another. Um, I think uh, being a great leader um, really comes down to kind of thinking about, you know, what your core values are and, and what you want out of life. Uh -huh. Right. And what the like because the the speaker the other day he yesterday at the workshop uh, gary i think it was gary that was talking about um anything past 90 days was more of inspiration yeah right um you know when you're making goals and anything under 90 days is kind of like that short term now yeah you know the operations the metrics and everything else how we're going to get to the long-term vision yeah i think leading by example has I think that's a good way to think about leadership mm -hmm. is like, what's the inspiration long-term of what you want, you know, people to remember you for and what you want your kids to, to be like and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then breaking it down to what those daily habits are, you know, to accomplish how you want people to, to remember you and, and view you for one of my buddies just died, spoke at his funeral, one of the most incredible dudes, I mean, he had the gift of this dude, <laughs> this dude was something, man. He could, mm -hmm. he could talk to anyone. He was very intelligent and everything else, but so many people showed up to his funeral mm -hmm. and talked about how great of a person he was and how great he made everybody feel and how special yeah. he made everybody feel and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I, I think it comes down to that, right? Mm -hmm. um, being dependable and um, going out of your way to make people feel special. 100%. You know what I mean? 100%. So they were, they were, people remember that. That's what I'm working on now. Cause like I said, like if you're so hard, you're probably not treating people special. So that's, that is something that I'm working on if myself. What? If you're freaking hard all the time and you're like trying to work and, yeah. you know, yeah. squeeze every minute. You're so focused on the goal. Yeah. 
that you're just single goal. Yeah. You're just pushing people aside. That's tough. Dude. Yeah. That, yeah. And it's such a catch 22 because yep. you got to hit the goal. Yeah. You got, you have to succeed and like succeed that the catch 22 is you're trying to succeed at the highest level for your family. Yeah. Right. But then to put it, you know, you have to put enough into that to hit the goal, but yeah. then putting so much yet where do you, you know, there's, a, there's that little thin gray area yeah. of being able to put in enough, but then still be present where you're not pushing them, yeah. your family yeah. aside. Yeah. Uh, that is, that is a, that's a game, bro. That is a game. So focus on making fee, uh, people feel special um, is a great leadership quality. Last question. So like I said, the wealthy investor is, so people live a wealthy lifestyle. So that's wealthy in money, wealthy in love with your family, wealthy in your relationship with Christ or whatever your religion is, um, and wealthy in health. So how do you make sure that you're living the wealthy way? I think you have to take time for yourself, right? And, and reflect a lot. Um, what does that mean? Well, a lot of people don't, I mean, a lot of people meditate, yeah. right? Where you, where you find clarity um, you know, I don't so much meditate mm -hmm. in the traditional sense, but, um, I think having, having that time with yourself to kind of reflect yeah. about what's happening in all of those categories, yeah. you know, all the different wealth categories is super important to like take a step back and take a break, um, and, and visualize, you know, like how you feel yeah. about where you stand in all of those categories and where can you get better? Where are you lacking? and stuff like that. The way I do it is, you know, I go to the gym every day, yeah. six o'clock with my father, um, Monday through Saturday. And like that, that's kind of like my time. Yeah. Right. And that's where I get a lot of clarity. Yeah. Um, you know, when I, I know it's kind of like the phone isn't ringing. Um, you know, I have time to really kind of think about stuff. I'm spending yeah. time with my dad and I can kind of reflect on what else happened. Like, Am I pushing people aside? Am I yeah. putting too much into yeah. this over here? Right? Do I need to ease back here and put more here? Yeah. Um, I think self reflection is is key, honestly, to 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 living the, living that wealthy lifestyle you're talking about. You know, I think that's a big step in it, right? And then taking what you see and making adjustments along the way because it's it's a journey. It's like you're constantly yeah tweaking and changing right there's no such thing as like i've got it no nothing never no you think you got it <laughs> and then something yeah. will show you yeah, oh damn i don't you got have it. it you don't yeah. have it yeah well all right brother well this was the wealthy investor podcast we are out peace thank you so much for watching this podcast i hope you got tons of value out of it i'm gonna put the next episode right here so you can continue oh, watching so and continue crushing Keep selling and keep building. And we'll see you guys on the next video, which is right here. I 35 with the top down. Quit to tell a hater they should get like me.